Hello and welcome to the Rebuild series. I am Jessie if you're new and this is Stray With Me. Um, I'm going to do things a little different this, for the, this series versus what I did the last time and what I've seen people do online. Um, because I am not really, I'm not a pro, I, this is the second build, um, I don't have like the experience to like tell people how to do things um, I'm just I'm gonna use this format to just kind of show you what I did and explain what I did not necessarily say how to do it um, there's a couple of things I'm gonna explain more deeply but for now it's just gonna be me kind of talking you through it um, I got to a certain point in my build where I just found that I wasn't filming things because I really just wanted to be done um, so I filmed what I could and um, because my van's different um, and also the layout I think is a little unique um, I want to still release this so that it can help people if it does help so so I'm sitting here because I don't really want to give anything away um, if you do follow me on Instagram you've probably seen little glimpses and photos and stories and stuff but in terms of these videos I don't want to give away yet what the interior looks like so let's get going before we start my build is done um, so if you do, there's only like so much I can fix if during these videos I explain something in a way that you think you could have done better or that could be done better. Um, these Those kinds of comments are going to be appreciated um, and definitely still leave them, but just don't leave, maybe leave them in a way that, well, I can't do anything about it. My build's done, so it would have been helpful to be uploading while I'm getting things done, but that's just not how it came out, so feel free to keep leaving those comments so that anyone who's reading them can improve upon what I've done. Um, again, like I said, I am not a professional, so we're just doing it my way. So when I started the build, I pretty much had to tear everything out. I pretty much went down all the way to the insulation and a decent chunk of the framing I took out too. Um, my kitchen ended up being completely redone. Um, I added a whole closet space so before I could do anything I had to change what framing there was um, and this took a couple days because I just didn't want to take something down that I could have used and I guess it probably ended up taking about the same amount of time I was trying to save myself I guess I was just trying to save myself work by not taking apart something that was something I could have used I think I kept like one of these posts I think it was the one on the inside um, but the majority of the framing especially for the bed that all had to be new I am so hot I guess spring has officially come it's 72 degrees today <laughs> And I have my fan going. Luckily, my wi my electrical is wired, so I don't have to really worry about sweating. But I am slowly moving with the uh, sink and counter. Um, I just found that I <laughs> stupidly wired something through one of the hoses, and because it was something I added later, I it was really hard to get to, and I guess I accidentally ran it. So instead of unwiring it, which would be a pain. Um, I'm just gonna clip the hose and I guess I'll buy a new a new sink, new faucet. Um, I can't believe I did that. I'll show you right now. So you see that? This very important wire runs right through this little weighted hose. So I'm just gonna clip that and just replace it. It's very dusty and dirty down here. And then once I figured out what my plan was and got a rough estimate of the measurements, um, I started doing the window deletes. There were, there's a few different ways you can do this, um, but this is how I did it on my van. Oh my goodness. Are you being sweet? Mwah. Um, so because both of these I wanted to cover up with walls, um, I need to do a couple of things to prep it. So one of the things is painting and I want to make sure it is fully dry before I do anything else and it's going to be pretty warm today so I might as well just get it started now so I can get a couple coats in while it is daytime uh, before I get my actual work started um, but yeah so it's a little chilly there's a breeze coming through because I have the windows open to help <laughs> um, dry them as it's happening so let's get started all right so to start I have to take off 
the screen that's on both of those windows. Um, one of, I think the one that's still going to be visible, the screen I think is broken. So I'm gonna have to double check. I think it's that one. It might not be, but I'm gonna try to keep it intact as much as possible. I'm gonna use um, like this little blade just to keep it nice and clean so I can potentially save it for the one that's broken. Now I'm just gonna wipe down the windows a little bit. I really don't care if it's super clean. I'm sure it's probably better and the paint would stick better if it was super clean, but I just don't really give a shit. It's going behind a wall anyway. It doesn't need to be perfect. So also because things are pretty open in here right now, um, it's not like finishing work I'm doing. I am not putting up, putting down like drop cloths or anything because it's just gonna get walled up and repainted anyway. Um, it's not worth the trouble. What is going on here? Okay, that's gonna have to do. Um, yeah, I just got a little can. I got outdoor exterior paint um, just to make it a little bit more durable. Um, but yeah, it's just a simple black. Kind of, I think I said, we sat and finished again. I was just like, it's literally going behind a wall. It's not gonna matter, but of course you have to choose something. I used a black satin outdoor paint um, directly on the glass. Um, I had to do about three coats. And then after that I put insulation with the silver side against the glass. Um, so that's why I put the paint down um, partially to help. I think it would probably lead to some condensation if it started getting hot and not, wasn't like really blocked. There could potentially still be condensation, which is why usually when you do window deletes, like the ideal way to do it is to just take the window out and re-weld like the patch into whatever was there. So when you see school buses do window deletes, that's like the best way to do it, but I, yeah, it wasn't that important to me. Um, also because those windows that I covered, they have sliders. I put a piece of wood there to make sure that it wouldn't rattle open. Um, and this was before I put the insulation in because I wanted the insulation to cover that too. Um, and then once I put the insulation on, I put a layer of Reflectix. Um, that's just an extra insulating precaution, um, especially being a window. I wanted to make sure as much heat got blocked. So I decided to cover those windows because I never opened the curtains there in the first layout. Um, and honestly, like windows bring in so much heat. So like if you can, it's best to, when you do build a van, potentially to get like a cargo van, like a lot of people do, um, instead of a passenger van. Um, Cause while it's really, like I love the amount of windows I have. Um, it's so nice to be able to be inside if it's raining or whatever and feel like I'm kind of outside but because those windows weren't being used anyway they were just adding heat um, I never opened those curtains especially the one behind the kitchen because Shasta when she was little I had to keep her up here and that would just radiate heat so I never opened those curtains and then that one was gonna the second one close to the back of the van is gonna be the closet so that's gonna have a cover over it anyway um, yeah just easier to cover those windows Next, I took down the ceiling. Uh, if you have been following me for a while you on Instagram, you've probably known about my, my leaking issues. Um, so between that, wanting to actually get access to it and finally uh, fix those leaks, I haven't had leaks so far since uh, being in the van, but I haven't really been through a lot of rain. Um, I was wanting to fix leaks and then also because the way my roof is curved, it has like kind of a lower side and then a middle bubble. So that middle bubble was just dead space because I just used one sheet of plywood, of um, like poplar wood um, to cover the whole thing. So I lost about four inches of space right pretty much directly where I'm sitting. Um, and I still can't stand up, but it definitely added a lot of headroom compared to before. And um, having even just the 
fiberglass roof is really nice just to make it feel a little bit more spacious in here but I just wanted to make the most of that down I realized I had to take the insulation down because of how my new ceiling was gonna go in I did kind of a plank style but so you need furring strips strategically placed so that there's something to screw them into so I use Gorilla, Gr Gorilla Glue to uh, glue up I think they were one by twos um, and I ended up using glue because there isn't anything to screw it's a fiberglass roof there's no like cross beams like a lot of those metal vans have um, so using glue was really the best option that is all for this rebuild video thank you for watching the next episode is going to cover the walls and the ceiling and what I did for that um, make sure you're subscribed like this video um, leave a comment if there's something that I should have done differently um, so that someone knows so that someone can learn from my mistakes um, also hit that notification bell if you don't want to miss the next video in this series and I'll see you soon